Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to cover the sewing process of the Lansdowne Bra by Orange Lingerie. The first half of the video, I'm going to discuss supplies you're gonna need, as well as mistakes I made the first time through making the bra. In the second half of the video, I'm going to cover all the alterations I did to make the Lansdowne Bra fit my body. These are alterations specific to me and you may or may not need to do them, but I just wanted to provide you with an idea of what options are available in terms of alterations. I'm going to provide as many resources as possible in the description below. So let's get started. A big mistake I made initially was not ordering enough fabric and notions to make the muslin bras to test the fit. This meant I used fabric that was similar but not quite the same for the muslins. However, you really should use the exact material for the muslins as for the real bra. Another mistake was not ordering enough hook and eye closures, rings, elastics, and underwire casing. Some bra suppliers do sell muslin kits, which I'll link below. You'll also need an 8012 universal needle, an 8012 stretch needle, and water soluble thread for the muslin. I use a water soluble thread for the bobbin only, and it saved me so much time and frustration making the muslin the second time around. Okay, now that I've covered the basic supplies, I'm gonna cover how to initially fit a bra to avoid mistakes. The first step to sewing a bra is figuring out your bra size, and to do that, you'll need to figure out your wire size. I would highly recommend a wire test kit after you've narrowed down your size range. I used a Liz Sews video to do this and I'll link it below. After you've found your wire size, you'll need to figure out your band size. There's many different measuring suggestions and standards, but I found it easiest to just measure my underbust and then measure the band pattern directly. Once you're at this point, you can use a chart that I'll also link below to find your orange lingerie size. So the steps are, wire size, band size, then the cup size will be a given based on those two measurements for orange lingerie patterns. One thing I did do correctly in the first bra attempt was alter the bridge piece. In terms of alterations, this should be the first piece you alter on the band. I followed the step from Orange Lingerie's book, which I'll link below. The basic premise is to trace the bridge to remove the seam allowance and make multiple copies so you can move them around between the breast tissue until they fit perfectly against the body. Then you can go back and make a new bridge piece with your template. This next part was my biggest mistake. I tried making a muslin to alter the cup and the band at the same time. Do not do this or you will be sad. It's important to alter the band first because if the band doesn't fit correctly, then it will pull on the cups, meaning the cups will never fit properly. One thing to note is the changes I made are unique to my body. So you may or may not need to do the things I needed to do in order to get the bra to fit you correctly. I put the bra on hold for a while and participated in a bra sewing conference put on by bra builders. I learned a ton and it made the second attempt go much smoother. Right away, I knew I needed to make a cylindrical torso adjustment on the band because I had a lot of gaping along the top of the band. I did this by using my first bra and pinning the material so there wasn't any gaping in the underarm area. I then measured the pinned area and removed it from the back and side band. The shape ends up being quite different from the original. I then assembled the band per instructions. Since I'm using a knit jersey, I doubled up the fabric with the stretch in the same direction as the pattern calls for. I also used a 2.4 millimeter wide and 1.4 millimeter long zigzag, which I liked. Mm -hmm. 
I tried on the band and it fit beautifully on the first try. Okay, half the alterations are done and it's time to start modifying the cups. Since I'm reusing my original finished bra, I needed to cut the old cups out before continuing. Next, I knew I wanted to lower the cup and sideband by 3 eighths of an inch. So I checked that both the 40 demi wire and the 38 demi, demi wire would fit with the lowered top edge. I felt the bra pattern had a little too much space around the wires after making the original bra, so I went ahead and made that change right away. I also removed the seam allowance on the cup pieces that interact with the cradle to make it easier to know where to sew the cups onto the cradle. Otherwise, I left the cups as drafted. You can see the 40 dummy wire does stick up a little bit and we'll address that later. The 38 dummy wire is perfect. After what I'm calling the original cup draft, the next set of alterations were what could be done to both cups. I moved the straps in by half an inch and then graded the line to meet up with the bottom of the outer cup. Next, I realized I needed to lower the apex. So I lowered the outer cup by half an inch starting at the marked notch and grading out to the seam allowance markings. Lowering the apex changes the total distance along that top seam line. So I needed to make the matching inner cup seam line the same length and then smooth the top of the inner cup. This is a little confusing, so I'll post links below about general pattern manipulation since you'll likely be making different changes than me. Earlier, I discussed the water soluble thread and it honestly made the entire process so much easier. It barely needed any water as well, so I could continue sewing right away. I'll link the thread below. I was able to reuse the cups to test out my latest changes before moving to individual cup alterations. Even after all the alterations I already did, I had a feeling I would still have a gaping neckline, and I did. Each cup was different, so I made sure to save this until the end. I pinned a dart, marked, sewed, dissolve the bobbin thread, and measure the total amount I needed to take in. The left cup needed to be taken in three quarters of an inch, so I broke the darts up into three smaller sections so it would be smoother. The right cup only needed to be taken in three eighths of an inch, so I did one large dart that I slashed and closed. I then made sure to smooth out the top of the inner cups. The last alteration is completely optional, but I wanted to add some extra support so I drafted a sling. I'll post a link to the tutorial I used to create this draft below. The main information I found was to make sure you don't create a sling that's too large. To do this, mark the halfway point to the apex where the inner and outer cups meet. 
I tape my pieces together, overlapping the seam allowance to make it easier. I then mark the top of the sling where the strap meets up with the cup. I should have only used the width of the strap, so half an inch, but I decided to make it a little larger, which didn't do much. I then traced the cup edges and connected the top and bottom using a straight ruler, making sure not to go beyond the halfway mark I previously made. This is for an internal sling, but there's other options available. I finally get to sew the real deal using my pretty fabric. The first is my bra tool for the lining. It's lightweight and feels pretty breathable. The second is the outer fabric for the pattern. It's a bamboo rayon and was pretty annoying to work with, but I love the pattern and skipped using natural fibers just this once. The stretch lace is for the inner cup and is really pretty. There aren't many options for natural laces, so I'll have to stick with synthetics for now. The sling is designed to be cut on the fold with the stretch perpendicular to the folded edge. One trick I learned from Liz Sews to hide the seams is to layer the tool on one side while sewing, then flip the tool over where it should be positioned to encase the seam allowance. She knows a lot about bra sewing and I would highly recommend watching her videos to learn more. I didn't like how the bra straps were designed, so I changed that while I was modifying the bra band. Instead of the straps being part of the band elastic, I changed the design so the straps were just sewn onto the top elastic. The pattern also had the strap sliders in the front of the bra, which created bulk that I didn't like. So instead, I copied a ready-to-wear bra and flipped the slider to the back. Next time though, I'd use four rings total because how it's currently attached to the front of the bra without a ring causes some twist. I've had difficulty sewing the hook and eye closure using a zigzag stitch, which is recommended. So I tried using a walking foot, but that didn't work either. A straight stitch with an 8012 universal needle worked the best for me. And we're done! The fit of the bra is amazing. Sometimes I forget it's on. However, this is a project that requires dedication and more time than I initially planned for. I hope you found this video insightful and helpful on your bra sewing journey. I know I learned a lot. It was a very frustrating project, but honestly, now that I have a pattern that fits me, um, I can just make 
as many bras as I want using that template, which is really nice. So I hope this inspires you to sew your own bra.